Ever since August 10th, 1929, when Harvey Firestone drove the first ball down the fairway, Firestone Country Club in Akron, Ohio has created a stir throughout the golf world. More than 70 years later, Firestone finds itself as one of the elite golf facilities in the world. In 2005, the WGC NEC Invitational returns to a place where Tiger Woods has dominated, winning his first three starts in Akron. And he's never finished outside the top five. Woods is back again to take home his fourth Gary Player Cup. Day. Yes! Go in! Oh! There it is! 59! The best final round ever! Oh my! <laughs> Welcome to this edition of PGA Tour Classic, the 2005 World Golf Championships NEC Invitational. Firestone Country Club is a 7,300-yard par 70 that has the players talking. Overall, one of the best golf courses we play uh, year in and year, uh, year out. It's always in great condition, and uh, it's all you want. It's got plenty of length to it and requires a lot of good shot making and uh, a, a great place to have a, a World Golf Championship. It's just a good golf course. It's one that you have to shave your ball off the tee on. And you know you just have to put it in the fairway and make a lot of putts on that course. It's just a great golf course. Few holes where uh, you really have to hit the ball long and, and straight, uh, and it's a very demanding course. Uh, from my point of view, I think it's one of the toughest courses we play. Like the 667-yard par 516, the longest hole on tour, also the fourth hardest par five in 2004. The 16th saw 63 bogeys or worse compared to only 61 birdies and actually played over par for the week. In 04, the play was to lay up. No one went for it in two. You really have to manage your game well around that kind of course. If you can put the ball in the right place in the green, you can have a chance to make a few birdies, but uh, if you're above the hole, it's going to be tough. The south course at Firestone is groomed and ready to show its teeth once again for the 2005 WGC NEC Invitational. The strength of the 72-man field has been compared to that of a major championship. Phil Mickelson coming off a win at the PGA. World number two, VJ Singh, set to battle the favorite, Tiger Woods. Over to the second, we saw Tiger's second shot drifting to the right. And uh, the way he played it, a very heavy lie. Woods, who started on the back nine with back-to-back -back birdies. Yes, yeah, so we move to 16. And the short third shot for Vijay Singh. This green is very firm. Oh, beautifully done. That'll curl around the hole. Singh makes birdie on his seventh hole of the day, and we'll go ahead to the par 3 12th. Now, Davis Love. Bogey at nine. Bogey at 11. Davis Love, the third, would bounce back with a birdie at 12 and move to three under. Back to the par four first. As yes, we look at Vijay Singh. Good hole, the first good opening hole. Singh bounces back as well. He moves into red figures. Back over to nine. And Tiger Woods, this four birdie, this to move to four under, get a share of the lead with Stenson. Position we've been used to seeing him in over the last few years here at the uh, NEC and Woods with birdie top of the board at the ninth so he moves the four under par opens up with a round of 66 here at Firestone Wood shares the lead with Henrik Stenson back to five Stenson's monster birdie attempt stretches his lead to one shot over world number one. The best shot of the first round belongs to Chris DeMarco playing his third at the par five second and DeMarco one hops it in for an eagle. He would go on to shoot 67 just one off the pace set by Tiger Woods and VJ Singh. Second round action at Firestone is next. In 1999, at the inaugural WGC NEC Invitational, Tiger Woods was coming off his second major championship win at Medina Country Club. 
Woods had five bogeys in the final seven holes, and Phil Mickelson shot a sizzling 65 in the final round. But the defining moment of the tournament came at the 17th with the 15-footer to clinch the title. With his victory in Akron, Tiger became the youngest player to ever win five PGA Tour titles in a single season. And Tiger is tied for the lead at the 2005 edition and is showing no signs of letting up. We pick up second round action with Tiger tied for the lead. He has this for his first birdie of the day and Woods reads the straight putt perfectly and moves to five under. And we'll move to 16 and Peter. And 16 is the monster downhill par five. Paul McGinley, very close to the water, putting for a birdie. And <laughs> putting very well. Seemed to be just about dead straight. He hit it firm. 13. Thomas Bjorn, a beautiful tee shot. And that from 157 yards, also a nine iron, Peter. And just holding his follow through as he loves it. It's an aggressive play and a very good one. The man from Denmark would card his third birdie of the day and finish in a tie for third. Second, uphill par five, 526. Luke Donald, no problem. Taps it in for a birdie. Four under through 11 holes of his second round. He started on the 10th. Back at the 10th hole, hole right on the front. And Tiger, a perfect tee shot. 91 yards, has to be careful not to overspin this. He's brought it in much lower than the shot into the last hole. Well done, took all the spin off it. Excellent play. Interesting, just kind of lobbed it up there. Ahead to the green, his seventh in regulation on the round. Tiger chance for a birdie. Nice, aggressive stroke. He'd got the ball in a good position. Didn't have to worry too much about the line. Perfect drive, well controlled. Rich and he is leader alone at six under one ahead of VJ. Who is in big trouble at 16. And VJ, sixth shot. Why not on the green at this par five? You know, a bit of a spongy lie here, Peter. That's why he went with the fairway medal. Oh, what a save there. <laughs> <laughs> Moral victory. Moral victory. First bogey of the day though for VJ. Just one bogey in his first round. And first bogey of this second round. Back in the fairway. This is Henrik Stenson. Let's see if he is the next victim of 16. No, he hasn't. What a wonderful pitch shot. An excellent chance to move to five under alongside Tiger. Which he does. And back over to 18. VJ Singh, this is third. He needs to toss this just a little bit right of the hole, maybe just a little beyond. That win uh, left to right there, Billy? Left to right and pretty strong. Nice line. Oh, look at this. Just look like at so. This. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly hold it. So VJ will have that for his par. Singh saves par after two straight bogeys. Now we're back over at 15, and uh, Tiger hit a brilliant iron shot into here. Andy's got a, you know, makeable, about a 10 footer. Yeah, it's definitely makeable. And I think when a player's gone a long stretch of holes without making a bogey and finally makes one, it's like a pitcher throwing a no hitter into the fourth or fifth inning. Sometimes they can get lit up after they get that first hit. It's always been a very good comeback guy oh, after a bogey. Yeah. So Tiger Woods, after his first bogey of the tournament at 14, comes back with a birdie at 15 to move back to 600. Tiger finishes the round in a tie for first at the 2005 WGC NEC Invitational, a Tiger Woods Classic. Welcome back to PGA Tour Classic. It's moving day at Firestone Country Club. The third round is underway, and VJ Singh and Tiger Woods are battling a host of others that are in contention in Akron. We rejoin the action with Woods highlights. After a 353-yard drive at the par 5 second, Tiger has this mid-iron approach from the left side of the fairway. He plays his second shot and has this makeable eagle putt. A near miss for Woods, but he moves to 5 under. Then at the next hole, Tiger is positioned perfectly off the tee after a 301-yard drive. He spins the ball back off the fringe to five feet below the hole. 
Woods has this short putt to make back-to-back -back birdies. And he sneaks it in the right side, and the gallery approves of Tiger's fast start. Ahead at number six. And Chris DeMarco. Boy, after you get off that par train, there's no going back. DeMarco makes birdie. Let's go to 12. And we're going to find Sergio Garcia over here on the right-hand side, popular side because that deep bunker's on the left. Come on. Oh, man. It just fainted into the hole. 14. And we've got Kenny Perry here. This hole linked in a couple years ago, now 467. That's such a short swing, it's got to be his third shot. Back to number 11. And Tiger's second, David. Well, no tree trouble here, but a horrible lie. Just 96 yards. That one's got to fly. Uh -oh. oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, that's not good. Let's go to 13. And Sergio Garcia, who has been going well, has this for a par. And well hold, and you can tell par putts are important. Keep the momentum going. It stays at four under. Tiger for a miraculous par save after playing his third shot to within 26 feet. Oh, my. How about that part, David? Yeah, that was... Uh... That's exactly what he needed after missing the easy one in the last green. Ahead to the 221 yard par 315. Let's go to Kenny Perry. Left to right putt for birdie. Looks good. Yeah. And birdie number five on the round for Perry. Perry almost had a two shot swing with Tiger after the birdie at 15, but Tiger's near impossible par save at 12 gives him a two stroke cushion. And over to 13. And Tiger Woods has uh, made a good connection with this one, David. Yeah, we can safely say that. He has 109 yards left. Humans do not hit it here. Watching it carefully. Needs the spin now. Thank you. After sticking it in tight, Woods makes birdie. Well, Kenny Perry laid up, and he hit a longer drive than John Daly, but it was just in the first cut of rough and didn't want to try it. There's just nowhere to hit it. Kenny's not that kind of player. He'll fool figure it out. And boy, he's in on a flag stick with that sand wedge. And he really got robbed there. <laughs> okay. All right. A tough break for Perry. Back to Irishman Paul McGinley in the hunt at 14. Yeah. He makes birdie there for his fourth birdie of the round. 16. That would have been Kenny's, Kenny's story if that ball would have ricocheted in the water living with the dead. Now, just out of spite, he's going to putt it. Oh, it's got to go in. There we go. There we go. There is justice. And it's here on the 16th hole. I'm kind of looking at the hole since it should be repaired. I would have done that before I putted. Some players are upset about the first weather delay of the third round. But it doesn't last long, and we rejoin the action with Kenny Perry for birdie. And we go back out to Peter Osterhaus at 17. Thank you, Jim. Kenny Perry hit a wonderful second shot. He'd missed the fairway, laying up off the tee in the right rough. Blind second shot up the hill. And now an excellent chance for a birdie. A chance to move to seven under par. Tiger up. Pop out over at 15 to state eight under, so a lot can happen the next few minutes as far as the top of the leaderboard. Yeah. No problem. Hold from off the green at the previous hole. 131 with four birdies, no bogeys. 16. Sergio had 170 yards into this hole for his third shot, barely got it over the water, and yeah. And all the people here remember three hours ago when he hit that shot and barely cleared it. I thought it was going in the in the pond. He walks away happy. Let's go to 15. And Tiger Woods trying to save par and keep the bogey free round going. Oh. 
first bogey of the day. So Tiger drops back to seven under and tied with Kenny Perry. Tiger leaves the 15th green frustrated. The gallery is enjoying watching Tiger though, no matter what he shoots, but they will have to wait. Just as he is set to play, another weather delay at Firestone, the second in an hour. The players must mark their balls where they lie, sometimes with more than one tee. Chris DeMarco currently tied for seventh and is anxious as is Tiger Woods. But players are escorted off the course in golf carts this time and will have to finish their third rounds early Sunday morning. Tiger would finish the third round tied with Kenny Perry. The leaderboard is tightly bunched going into the final round. It's the final round of the 2005 World Golf Championships NEC Invitational. And the man who has finished no lower than a tie for fourth since the event's inception is tied for the lead. He will be trying to put some distance between himself and his fellow competitors. Let's be honest, he's trying to dominate the field again and take his fourth title at Firestone. After finishing his third round earlier in the morning, Tiger must not lose sight of charging Chris DeMarco. Over to the third. And DeMarco for birdie. Oh, that was right. Gutted. DeMarco off to a fast start. Too bad. Back to two. Tiger with his third. Woods makes his third birdie of the week at the par five and moves to nine under. To six. Chris DeMarco hoping to join the hunt here for birdie. Just inside the edge. Oh, yeah. Dead Boy. center. He's hit some very confident putts so far today, Jim. He's walking after him halfway there. And let's go see where Tiger's ball is on three. Now, David Faraday, what's he got? Well, he's got 115 yards. The problem here, Bobby, is this lie. It's sitting down in a kind of a bird's nest. It's clean enough, but in a depression. So, I mean, it's uncontrollable, really. And That's one you just got to power out of there. Well, exactly. Uh, certainly don't take the chance of leaving it short here and, and maybe long left if he can get it up over the trees in front of him. At least the greens are a lot softer today after the rains yesterday, about a quarter inch of rain. Yeah. That's going at it with a wedge. Boy. Can we send it back over to the fourth. Paul McGinley now this is for the lead three guys tied at seven. <laughs> Glanced it by the hole. Well an awkward angle in here David Ferdy. Has he got anything. Well he's got 160 yards. He's got a seven iron back in his stance. He's going to try and hit a little hook. I'm just kind of an idiot if you leave it to the right of the flag. So he'll probably overhook it. Give himself plenty of green. Oh, it's man. A shot from there. <laughs> That's unbelievable. He didn't overhook it. He just hit about 12 feet, pin high. Nice shot, Kenny. Okay, David Ferdy, give me a read here. Well, this is outside the left. A pretty flat putt, really. Not too much downhill. I think he's got a little mini goatee going here. Woods just misses his chance to break out of the three-way tie for the lead. Meanwhile, there is trouble for Paul McGinley at the par three fifth. Go back out to the play at the fifth. McGinley's third shot at the par three. A little easier lie this time. He makes bogey. At the ninth hole, Chris DiMarco, third shot at this par four. So in trouble off the tee. Third shot. Well done. DeMarco, six under, remains one off the pace. And Tiger, who hold out brilliantly way into the third round, had not missed a shortish putt in the whole tournament. Well, that was left very quickly. 
Uh, that was the opposite of the one on the third. Absolutely, that's not a good sign. So two bogeys in a three-hole stretch. And VJ at the 14th. He is only three back. A drive of 317 yards, and he's making small play out of this 467-yard hole. Takes that right at it. Tough hole location here again today. They're all tucked. VJ moves to five under after a birdie at 14. Back to Kenny Perry on the tee at the 219 yard par 37. He's looking for his first birdie of the week on this hole and wants to end his four two putt streak. He knocks it to 12 feet and has a chance to regain a share of the lead. As we move up to DeMarco who is on a roll. His second shot par four 11th. The hole cut traditional placement way in the back right. Oh and DeMarco that remaining for birdie to tie for the lead. So with VJ Singh charging DeMarco charging. And Kenny Perry trying to hold them all off with this birdie putt. That'll rev his engines. And Perry gets to eight under. Let's go to eight. Sergio Garcia's second shot. You can see the drive. That's a big one. You see the. Oh, it just leaves him just a little flick with a sand wedge. <laughs> Sergio Garcia converts the birdie. Let's go to 11. DeMarco for birdie. Boy, he's gotten these putts. And DeMarco gets to seven under. Four under in his round today. Okay, David, what we got here? Just a little, just a little flip. Yeah, 105 yards, just yeah. a sand wedge, and this is land very cleanly. He can spin this. Get the hole! I'm gonna try to hit it back left and screw it in the ground right there. Okay, okay. Woods cards his fourth four of the week at the eighth. And now on the 12th hole, we've got 164 yard par three. He's been hitting some iron shots really close here of late, but you can see that tilt there. And he, he has a tendency to pull the ball to the left. Oh, man, that's really left. DeMarco would not get it up and down, and he falls to six under. Around the green, Paul McGinley's third shot. Just needs to hack it out and hope for the best here. Got a relatively soft bounce, but on it runs. McGinley goes on to make par. We're midway through the final round, and Kenny Perry is holding on to a two shot lead at the 2005 WGC NEC Invitational. Tiger Woods was once in a three way tie for the lead, but his flat stick has been letting him down thus far. He hopes to change that as he heads into the final nine holes of the tournament. Back over to nine. Kenny Perry with this lengthy par putt. Two shot lead over three players. Wow, well, a bogey. Anxious to see this stroke, Doosty. And this becomes very important. Kenny Perry makes the bogey. Tiger would be livid if he doesn't make this par. He wants to keep the pressure on. After the huge drive, just uh, the main problem for most players, 484 yard par four would be length. Not the problem for Tiger, but out of the rough, he couldn't get to the green. Three bogeys in a seven hole stretch. McGinley for par. He's got to hammer this. This is still uphill, moving to his left. Wow, boy, this just changed a lot of things. Well, Andy, you're talking about the door being opened by the leaders. I'm reminded of that sliding glass door that you walk into and you think it's open. This golf course is really hard right now. There's Sia for par, only two back. Ooh, oh, that was that yeah. was a terrible stroke. That had to be outside the right, and that was a very unconfident stroke right there. Let's go to 11. And Stuart Appleby. Gets to four under. 
And back in the picture to the tenth. And uh, what's the situation here, David? Well, he's got 108 yards, looking high. So his mistake here should be short. He's going to have to get this up very quickly. I'm not sure if he can get up the hole. Looks like he's got an opening down below, David, but he's going up high. Well, he has, but it, it's a bad line. It's on an upslope, so I'm not sure he can keep it down. Gotcha. Oh, he wanted that pretty hard. Oh, that's. He got it there. It's just left, David. Yeah, I kind of hiked that up and away on the wind. Good opportunity for Tiger right now to make a statement. Well, a tough yardage here, 104 yards up the hill and a little into the breeze. So. Trying to keep he can get it there with sand wedge easily, but getting it to this back right corner and keeping it there without ripping it back is the problem. And a nice dead arm swing that should not have much spin at all. But has some. It's still soft up there. Better stop. Well, that one really retracted. Let's go to 14. He shares second at the moment. Demarco. Get there, baby. Brian. Nice. Chris, He's sharing second, but he's gone backwards since he made birdies and tied for the lead. Now he has played a quality shot right here. 11. And Sergio's second, Peter. An eight iron knocked down from 153. Riding the wind. And about seven feet for Garcia for birdie. And that could take Sergio into that log jam in second place. Garcia would not negotiate his birdie and remain three shots back of leader Kenny Perry. Perry is hoping to get up and down at 10. All right, Kenny Perry and about to play his third. Got to go all the way across the green. This shouldn't be that tough. No, it all depends on the lie. David, what's he got lie wise? Well, you can see there he's right in the alleyway where the players walk off to the next tee, so you know it's against the grain. That wasn't hard enough at all, Jim. The backswing wasn't big enough. I mean, he was more concerned with how he struck the ball than, than distance. And uh, that wasn't even close to being a good shot. And the uh, last four pairings, that's uh, eight players in all. None of them under par for the day. And Tiger with a chance here for birdie. And man, Kenny Perry has opened the door here for him, Jim, quite honestly. I mean, Kenny ought to be eight under at this point in time. He had a, a simple hole here at 10 and number nine. The tough thing was the drive. Now, Tiger with a clean look at picking up two shots. Good stroke. Oh, yes. Tiger to six under. 14 DeMarco for birdie. Just to join Tiger. And yes. How about the second shot he hit in there? Skipped it right past the bunker. Playing as close to the bunker as he could. Popped it up near the hole and made it. Back at 10. Kenny Perry's got to right himself now. And that's a bogey five. So suddenly it goes from a two shot advantage for Kenny Perry into a three way tie for the lead. The 12. The lie is not particularly good. It's one of those lies that you want to hit aggressively, but the shot says hit it gingerly. You know, Paul doesn't play over here much either, Peter, so I don't think he's really used to this gnarled up grass. It's nice. It's nice. McGinley cards a double bogey at 12. 18 and VJ Singh 156 from the center of the fairway hole in the back left. He's actually got to take this up over the corner of the tree. Oh, a little dart. That's pretty well done right there. That to get to five under. Back to 11. And Kenny Perry, after bogeying the last two holes, now in trouble, David. 130 yards, a really bad lie, and a half chance to run this up into the center of the green through a very narrow gap. That's hot. Perry with all sorts of problems, but he still manages to save his par. And Tiger with his wedge. Yeah, this is a wedge, and it's only 96 yards. He's hitting a lot of these little sawn-off shots to try to keep the spin off it. That's similar to the shot he held at Pebble in 2000 on the 15th hole. Little half really half pitching wedge to take the spin off of it and that's just what he needs here and it's not a miniature golf swing you'll see him hold the blade square on the way through hold it open little punch oh my goodness actually that wasn't really miniature oh that's back there right where Stuart Appleby hold that pitch out a moment ago that was rather miraculous and Tiger can't believe it the final round drama continues next. 
At the 2000 WGC NEC Invitational, Tiger Woods was in the middle of his best season ever on the PGA Tour. He had already earned three major championships in the year and was trying to shoot a record 21 under par at Firestone Country Club. He came to the 72nd hole and hit this famous approach. Not being able to see the flag location, Tiger thrilled the spectators, polishing off his eighth win of the 2000 campaign and his 23rd career victory. Okay, we're gonna restore some sanity to this whole situation here. We had some good shots here on the 12th hole. And this is seven iron for Tiger. He's gotta go chopping at this and not hit it too far. Coming off a bogey at the 11th, he would have to settle for par and remain two over on his round. We got 171 yards left now. Third shot and it's just over the pond. This one will be long. The errant approach results in an untimely bogey at the par 4 13th. All right, David. Now, this was one of those, if you hit it, with a little bit of energy, it's going to plow right through the break. And if you just, you got to kind of hit it out to the let and let it faint back to the hole. That's right. It's a safe three putt for you or yeah. me. Mm -hmm. I'd you pull it right now. A tiny little one here. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, look at that. See, yeah. it fainted. It fainted there at the end. And that's that's the deal. If you hit it to the left and, and hit it, it's going to go right through the break. Wow. Staggering. Boys are staggering. First three putt this week. And Paul McGinley. From the center of the fair with this hole in the front left. Ooh, he found it. And he loves it. McGinley begins his charge with a birdie at 14. 13. Tiger Woods off to the perfect tee shot. 137 yards and a nine iron. And just making this hole look simple. But he would not drop the birdie putt. Back to 14. Sergio digging in here. Well, it did plug right in the face, and not much he can do with that. He had to go straight up to get over the lip, and that was not going to get it to the hole. Garcia back to two under. About all but ruining his chances. 17. And an opportunity for DeMarco. 161 yards, seven iron that he has tugged a bit. A nasty lean. The hole's back left, and he goes long left. Look how little green he has to work with. And DeMarco loses a shot at 17. Now back to the 13th. The Perry par putt well before Tiger's birdie opportunity. Ooh. An opportunity for Tiger to go to six under. 13th green, now maybe 60, 70 yards away from the 17th green. He doesn't know DeMarco's in trouble close by. Just about right edge. Oh, man, he hit it inside right. I think he dragged it. He looked as if he was trying to start it out on the right-hand side. Didn't let the putter swing through on that line. Tiger Woods finds himself tied at the top, but his putter continues to let him down. He is looking to end his par streak in the fairway at 14. Back at the 14th with the final pairing, Woods and Perry. It's Woods and DeMarco sharing the lead. Oh, 129 yards for Tiger. I don't think he's between wedge and nine iron there. A little breeze into. Especially when nerves of trying to win a tournament are involved. Boy, he made a good swing at that one. That's beautiful right there underneath the hole, about 12 feet. Woods cards his third straight par. And DeMarco. Not a whole location he'd like. It's all the way in the back left, but he has great position. He's got to bring it up over that tree with the left to right wind. 168 yard eight iron. Just off the putting surface. Not bad. He's got about 18 feet for birdie. But it is not to be. DeMarco finishes at five under. Let's go to 15. And McGinley. Solid. So McGinley still in it. Only one back. Three holes remaining. To 14. Kenny Perry will size up the long one inside of 30 feet, closer to 40 for birdie. Perry trying to right the ship and avoid three bogeys in a row, and he is unsuccessful. To 16. How about this? A drive of 376 yards. He's got 276. He's got to hit it. 
276 to get it over that water. The big old high cut. It's the only guy that's gone for it today. Oh, man. Garcia's aggressive play results in a birdie, and he is within two shots of the lead. Ahead to the green. Two putts made in a row. I'm, it always happens in threes. Yes, sir. Paul McGinley now tied for the lead. With Tiger, who is at the 15th. Tiger's all business right now, wasting no time. Got a chance. Well, I know one thing, Bobby. He he'll feel that he play, played a whole lot better than what he's going to score today. He's had a lot of great shots today. If you could give him about a foot to use anywhere he wanted to today, he'd save about eight shots. Now the conclusion of PGA Tour Classic. Tiger Woods is tied for the lead and playing his third shot at the 662-yard par 5 16. This is maybe the best swing he made all week. I mean, it is cosmic. It is straight up in the air. <laughs> That's good. That's just good. Woods is trying to make his only birdie of the week at 16. It's Kenny Perry. 78 yards. I think he got it too close. I don't think he can spin it from here. Yeah, he's got no chance from there. That's, that's just a bad layup. That results in a par for Perry. Let's go see if Paul McGinley can get this up and down. And a good view of what faces him. It'll upslope the first portion of the screen. How's the lie, Peter? Well, for this type of shot, it's not too bad. He needs to keep it low, land it on that lower level, and just hope he gets the weight right. So little no. green behind the cup. Not bad, the same distance beyond the hole, he's in the rough. Tiger, chance for a birdie at 16. Well, David Ferdy, you know he's had this putt before. With this pin there, you know these wedges have been long uh, on a couple of occasions when he's won here three times and had three other times in the top five. So he knows it's going to hook. His layup was uh, was the telling shot here. A lesser player would have tried to leave himself an easier third shot, but he has such confidence in his game that he doesn't mind leaving himself nearly 200 yards into this flag position and then comes up with a swing like this right over the top of the flag and you know everyone around this green just expects him to make this. He's a freak of nature. I mean, that's just supernatural right there. Paul McGinley for a par. So here's very wild tee shot costing him. This hole's only 400 yards. A two shot swing for McGinley puts the pressure on him playing the last while Chris DeMarco waits to see if Tiger will falter. Back to the 17th. And that's what we need to know. A one shot lead, two holes to play. Chris DeMarco watching from the clubhouse after a very nice 68. And uh, right around 40 feet left for him, David, for Tiger. Yeah, and coming out of a little groove here in the middle right. And uh, well, this flag is as close to the back edge as I think I've ever seen. And this ball gets up high and starts breaking left. It's got to be pretty quick at the hole, Lucy. It, it is. Uh, Sergio, from just a few feet further than this, spotted it right next to the fringe. Nice swing of the putter, nice rhythm. <laughs> Woods holds on to his two shot lead over the Irishman looking for a miracle at the 18th. This is McGinley. This is for birdie. Coming up over a ridge back down. Double breaker moving back to his right. Oh, what a pop. He has uh, played sparingly here in the States his best ever finish 
kind of forget that at Whistling Straits a year ago at the PGA Championship, he was two out of a playoff there, out of that three-way playoff, finished tied sixth. Jim, here's a guy who's going to be kicking himself right here. I mean, he messed up some easy holes today. Double 12, missed, you know, hit the worst shot you've ever seen off the 17th tee, and loses by probably two. Gritty performance for the old star Gaelic footballer. Back in the fairway. Kenny Perry from perfect position left center of the fairway has to take it up over that tree to that hole location. That's a nine iron. Boy, like he may have tugged it. He did just a bit. And he's seen enough of this round. The one in which he led it one time by two shots. Woods takes the victory march. Two putts to win. For a fourth time in Akron. He's worked hard today. It shows on his face. Some wins are easy, some are not. Just surprising to see the putter go south today. He's putted so well all week. I think Chris DeMarco knows that this is about to end up victory number five on the year for Tiger. The championship is well within his grasp. But he has to avoid bogey to prevent an Augusta rematch with DeMarco. This would be one of the strangest things we've ever seen if Tiger were to three putt. Well, I'll tell you something. One of the strangest things I've seen today is the fact that he hit that flag high, Manny. I mean, it's impossible to do that. The piece of judgment like that, it's, there's just so many variables with a lie and a shot like that. It's amazing. Yeah, I mean, everything was going against him, David. The lie, the ball below his feet, uh, because, you know, then. If you go to hit it easy enough to keep it down, it leaks off to the right. So he did everything he could to control it. And this is all about speed here. And where he's standing, he's a good foot above the hole. So that's how much downhill he is. speed and that will be enough to win it he'll mark no he'll tap in and there's your player of the year for 2005 and Tiger and again with that grit that determination and powers of concentration he wins again and claims yet another world golf championship his fifth victory of the year Woods can take a deep sigh of relief. There will be no playoff with DeMarco. It was not a low scoring affair for Tiger, but he grinded until the very end. David Faraday is with the champion. Tiger, some wins are easier than others. Oh. That was a nightmare. That was stressful. <laughs> oh my God. It, uh, the golf course was not easy. We played so brutally hard today and I putted, uh, uh, let's just say I've had better days. Well, congratulations on win number four. Got it. Thanks, That's buddy. fantastic Thank at Firestone. You. Well done. That's four wins here, David, in six tournaments. It was a day of miscues for Tiger, but he still loves Firestone. We need to keep playing more in Ohio. I love old traditional golf courses. I love the fact that you know, every hole's tree line is right there in front of you. And we don't play too many golf courses like that anymore. And when we do, it's, it's a real treat. Tiger treated the gallery to the tournament's decisive stroke at the par 5 16. He put the hammer down on the rest of the elite field, winning his fourth event for the third time. Congratulations, Tiger Woods, winner of the 2005 WGC NEC Invitational, a PGA Tour Classic.